Hello again, Vote Times Collectors. We have Actic Gear number AG EX10. Alright, but uh, this is of the Diving Beetle, and in particular, it has the Diving Flying Platform. Uh, this platform can be used to fly. I've seen it coming down mountain sides, but obviously, it can probably be used underwater because this is like an underwater robot. Uh, MEHQ, here's the line art, talks about the specs of the thing, and then here, it's an underwater combat robot. It's basically a walking tank that's waterproof apparently, and it rolls around in jungles and all that stuff. Alright, let's get into this uh, toy. It's kind of like a model kit slash action figure. Let's see, on the back, we got some, yeah, I remember this kind of scene in the Votoms, they're coming down the side of a mountain. So it flies. It's got thrusters and propellant tanks or something there. Seems like a thruster can move. I don't know about both though. Ooh, there's two characters here as well. Cockpit opens, optics move, there's an arm punch feature. Alright. Yeah, this has been opened before. Hopefully everything's in here. These are 148 scale. So you got this big blister thing. Uh, bits. Oh yeah, the tape is not done, so definitely a used, used one. All right. Ooh, there's some crud on this thing too. It's kind of gross. <laughs> I don't know how old that crud is. I don't know who this character is. It might just be a random grunt, but uh, this is a uh, Ru Shako, I believe. He's like a giant character, and there's two pegs here, so it can peg in the you might want to actually glue that in place after you paint them. So it's nice that there's actually a character. Uh, it's very, yeah, it actually is common. Here's the driver of the diving beetle. And then the weapon thing. Yeah, it's a card, backing card, fan club thing. These are, <laughs> this is actually, these fold into a triangle. So this is for the robot. This is a name tag for the flying platform. It's kind of funny they would bother to make that, but they did. All right, uh, these go into the hands, I believe. There's some open parts on the hand. All right, let's clip these all off here. Naturally, as I clip these parts off, the paint is gonna, you know, be clipped off with it. So it's nice that they, you know, paint these parts, but be, be mindful. Obviously, you're gonna have raw plastic shown after you clip it off. I'm too lazy to repaint them myself. I'm too lazy to even paint these pilots. I have a bunch of these pilots now, but then none of them are painted. It takes time. I don't actually like painting stuff. So one of these uh, grips here, obviously one's got the robot hand already molded on there, but the other one, this one here, is if you want to display the gun, you know, on its on its own. All right, that's done. Get all these parts off their sprues. These are uh, the magazines for the, for the weapon, and the extra ones going, I believe, into the backpack of this uh, robot. And then these are like wheels that go onto the feet, and I believe these are, they spin to propel the robot. They're like side propellers. It's a cartoon. <laughs> Doesn't have to be realistic. It's a cartoon of walking tank robots. Although we won't be far until we have walking tanks for real. Maybe the military already has them. Who knows? So the instructions here, they do tell you the 
age usually. So this is from 2007, maybe July. And uh, let's just pop this gun together. So it's just the two halves really, but I think you have to trap the handle. Where did that handle go? Here it is, yeah. So that handle goes in through here. These are all friction fit, you don't need glue or anything like that. Let's go out the front. You can just hear the friction. But yeah, you can also see the paint, you know, where, where it clipped it off is missing. But yeah, that handle can fold in totally flush, which is nice. Okay. I'm going to put the, the grip with the hand already attached up in here. Snaps in. Uh, the back of the hand piece goes here. I believe, yeah. Okay. And then a magazine. We're going to pop that in here. There's like a little lip or something. So I think you have to hook it in like this. Yeah. You have to hook in the magazine. So that gun is done. What's unfortunate about this gun is the barrel has no recess, so it doesn't really look as realistic as it could. Too bad. Alright, I think I could figure out the rest. That's the handle I don't need anymore. Alright, so I've reviewed the Diving Beetle before, but I'll just quickly go over it. The optics can rotate. They're all painted a nice metallic color, red and two like aqua colors. Uh, the cockpit obviously hinges, there's even a gray underside. And then the pilot can just sit in there. And then there's actually a peg because the controls are this thing. And that has to go into that peg. There's a screen on the back of the peg that wants to face the pilot. Oh boy, that's hard to do. I need tweezers. Hold on a second. got it. Surprise. Alright, well, I think I get the light in there. There's some minor cockpit details like control boxes on the side. It was mostly Spartan. Alright, well, you got a little like light here, which is really neat because it's actually behind a cage, but you can see the white of the light. So that's really, really tight details. Look at all the tightness of the panel lines and stuff like that. Even when the cockpit is closed, it's pretty tight, you know, because it's plastic and plastic. The shoulder has holes, because uh, these things are very often helicoptered in on cables. Uh, the backpack, here's this uh, air canister. I'm trying to see if this comes off. Because where are the ammo packs? Oh, that's totally open. No. Hmm. Alright, I don't know where those ammo packs go. You can see the torso, there's a peg and a ball there. It doesn't go up or down or anything like that. So it's kind of weird, actually. It's a big open gap. You know? Hmm. Back up. Yeah, strange. Alright, back to the shoulder. Sorry, there's a peg with a ball on the end. The shoulder actually moves independent of the arm itself. And so you can spin that around, you can go up. Well, it's actually a J. Oh, look at this. I didn't even realize that. That's a butterfly effect. So very cool. And let's just look at the arm off here. Uh, this forearm does spin. And then it bends around 90 degrees. And then the arm punch thing comes out. Uh, and then the hand, that can come out as well. It's just a fist for now. So that's pretty good. It's such a small figure, you know. But it, a lot of details. These armor pieces, nicely done with the rivets and all that, and then they do flip up. Oh no, my bad, they're actually stuck to the legs. I haven't reviewed this in a while. Uh, hinged here, and there's actually a date of 2005, 2006 on the back of it. Uh, Alright, so the legs here, they're on a peg with the ball on the end, so you can get some in and out, front and back, because that armor plate moves up. And then the knee just bends 
less than 90 degrees, I would say. Well, you know, because it bends forward a little bit. Maybe it is 90 degrees. But if you want this to go into crouch down mode, you can just pull it. See those boxes came out. They're in this, they reside in this groove here. Sorry, right here. And so you can flip that over forward if you want. Yeah, see, let me get this clog out of the way. Yeah, so. Hmm, the kneecap fell off. This is how it's supposed to be in crouch down mode. So if you wanted the pilot to get in and out of the vehicle, you would sit on the ground like this. And then the cockpit would open, the pilot would climb up and into it. I never display it like that because I think it looks weird. So, but it's nice that it can be done like in the cartoon. So you saw this come off, I'd recommend maybe gluing that in place in the future. Otherwise you'll probably lose it forever as being so small. The bottom of the foot is kind of like a wheel detail. Granted that's not a real wheel, it won't spin, but it's supposed to in the cartoon. And some regular grooves. And then you see here I put the clog on the bottom of this one and that's that roller wheel. This is just a smooth wheel. But you can pop in the uh, big wheel here, which I'm debating. I'm not sure yet. I didn't even realize because this, this is so tight. This actual clog slides back to widen itself. So that's neat, you know, get a little extra stability if you want. It's interesting, this hits an opening there. Maybe that has to do with the other part. All right, so yeah, you can display it different feet, clogs up, down. There's some grooving back here, a lot of sprue mark cuttings, you know, it's kind of like a model kit again, just they did it for you. All right, so that is that. Let's get this hand off and pop the uh, rifle on this guy. All right. arm like that. Okay, there we go. There is an open palm here for this side. Ooh, so that shoulder ball joint's not very tight. Yeah, that is a bit, that is a bit loose. That's unfortunate. Now, alright, so those little pieces I pulled off the sprue, you can see on this fist, it's just an opening, so you want to just take the, one of these pieces and jam it in there. You might want to glue it in there. I don't know what these, nope, those hands don't have that problem. So it's just the fists that need these little pieces here. Yeah, just to complete the hand. So I think that's smart what they did there. So you basically end up with two extra hands, three extra magazines, uh, two of these clog things, clog wheels, and then the extra handle for the, the weapon. Let's get into the real reason why I bought this. It's this. This flying platform. It's quite large. Uh, so you got some panel details. There's the recesses with black. These handles are just painted in metallic like a gunmetal. Uh, this is all raw plastic like a gray uh, base plate. Hmm, yeah. Interesting. Not sure why but I guess if you want to weather it, you know, you can weather this a different color. So that would be really cool if you're a model customizer. And then, yeah, it seems like both thrusters do pivot. I do feel like they're lacking in detail. They could have had some grooves in there, right? Kind of weak. But at least they move. These tanks, they don't come off or anything like that. Yeah, moderate detail. It's got this little cage around it so it can sit, of course. Just round dials. You would think there'd be something more detailed here, like a control panel. Uh, and then just a blank panel there, a checkerboard here. So it's a really basic accessory. They could, <laughs> they could, I could have designed this in about three hours. Uh, they could have done a much better job, I think. But at least the, it's in the robot. Now, here's an issue. Look at this. Will it get in there? Yeah, I guess it will get in there. And so you can get this hand around one of those rails. Hmm. Now the problem is, I don't. There is no open hand for this side of the robot, so you can't actually have the robot grabbing both sides of this this dive platform. You just have to like. 
I don't know, rest a gun on it like this, I guess. Hmm, interesting. So that is that. Alright, so here's a different diving beetle that came with like, it was a different set where it had like a mine layer track of some sort. And what makes this one different is the backpack can have those three magazines in the bottom and it has a rack for the weapon. So it's a little bit different in that respect. The hands also are very small. Uh, and this one actually has an open hand on this side. So this is definitely different. Different enough that I'm going to keep it for sure. This one is completely identical to what we reviewed. It's just I bought this used and it's been in the sun apparently. I think it's all UV faded. It looks like it's brown and green. Uh, so that's the aged look I guess. It's a marshy, if, if it's a marshland robot I guess it's fitting that it looks so bad. Or maybe I'll even customize it one day with rust or something like that. So I can't even remember if there was an ep I don't know, remember this scene, but I would assume this scene has something to do with a diving beetle. Rushako picking up someone and throwing them or something like that. Well, anyways, it's nice to have extra figures. Uh, one day I'll have to paint them, I guess, or maybe even pay someone to do it. Alright, well, thank you for watching today. Let's get these guys out of here and let this thing spin one last time. So in summary, as always, these Arctic gears are really nice, they're nicely detailed, they're very small, but it does, the one drawback is they're very fidgety because they are very small. But if you want to collect a lot of highly detailed things in a small amount of space, this this line of Arctic gears is the way to do it. So I'll continue to get more, I think there might be one, one or two more castings that I want to maybe pick up. and then this chapter of my channel will probably be, in it, be at an end because I don't think they actively sell these anymore. Alright, thanks for watching guys. See ya.